If you were to ask anyone that has gout, they probably could tell you all their symptoms. They could tell you when they were diagnosed, their very first attack, their triggers, everything. But if you were to ask that same person exactly what stage of gout they're in, they'd probably be looking at you like you're crazy. I mean, I, I did. I didn't really think about stages of gout. I just knew that I had tophaceous gout. I knew that when I was diagnosed at 13, I had um, pediatric gout. But I didn't know that there were four stages of gout. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically break down the four stages of gout. Um, and all this is from the arth arthritisfoundation.org website. And we want to create a new dialogue with our rheumatologists. So here we go. Let's start off with stage one. All right. So what is stage one? It is asymptomatic hyperuricemia. If you don't know about hyperuricemia, it's basically a high accumulation of uric acid in your body. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have any symptoms or means that you're in risk of possibly gout and also you're in risk of other comorbidities. Here's a quick breakdown of the first stage. So as you can see, I broke it down into a couple categories. So asymptomatic hyperuricemia is basically where the doctor finds out that you have a lot of your acid, but there's no attack. So you can have anywhere from like zero to like nine milligram per deciliter of your acid in your body, or even more or less. I mean, it really depends. Um, the number of attacks per year or month, none. You basically are like pre-gout, kind of like pre-diabetic, but you're pre-gout. The medications that you'll take, none. <laughs> um, and diet and exercise you know, just do your thing you might want to focus more on the Mediterranean or DASH diet um, try not to drink alcohol basically try to keep a low uric acid low purine type of diet and exercise do your thing honestly drum roll please then the second stage of gout is going to be acute gout so this is going to be pretty much when that hyperuricemia actually calls into action in the form of a gout attack or flare up. Acute gout is basically the beginning stages of gout. Let's just say that. Here's the breakdown. So acute gout, basically when you're looking at your uric acid levels, you're looking at anything between one to seven, possibly up to nine um, milligram per deciliter, but can't be controlled. Number of attacks per year or month, you're going to be looking at maybe one or two per six months or so. Um, it's going to be painful but manageable. You can have one per every like three to six months as well. Medications, the doctor probably, uh, doctor should actually, rheumatologist should give you allopurinol. Now they usually start off with 100 um, as your baseline and then they take your blood and look at your uric acid level, and then they go up and up and down for your uric acid, um, for your allopurinol dosage. Um, if you can't handle allopurinol, then you will take Euloric. Euloric tends to be a little bit more expensive on the on the market, so try to go for allopurinol first. But I totally get it. If you can't take allopurinol, get the Euloric. Now, on there as well, the doctor may give you about 30 to 90 pills for endomethacin. Um, they're going to start you off with endomethacin because that's, one, the cheapest, and also, two, the most popular. If you can't handle endomethacin, then you could definitely take and colchicine. If you can't handle that, you would take, like, naproxen, steroids, all that kind of good stuff. Or meloxicane. I think that's how you say it. That's another one. The doctor's going to give you 30 to 90 pills, you know, basically so you can... Try to, you know, take your endomethacin right as your gout attack. Um, study has proven that you should take your allopurinol or your euloric during an attack. So do not stop your allopurinol or euloric, but you want to introduce endomethacin when you do have your attack. If it's the 50 milligrams, you could take three per day. Um, no more than three. Diet and exercise. Um, usually because you're not to the point where it's out of control and it's still like normal gout, um, then I would say do what you do, you know, normal, but I would definitely uh, advise to rest after every single activity that you do, uh, mainly because you want to give your body time to rest and relax and drink lots of water. Um, for diet, you definitely want to go ahead and do exactly what the 
uh, first stage was. There's tons of videos and tons of websites that talked about diet and exercise for gout, so I won't go over it in this um, stage. But you're at a point where you can do certain sports and, you know, really high intense sports, but I wouldn't overdo it. I was in stage two, two for probably a year, maybe a year. Um, stage three, I was in it for between the ages of 14 to about 18. And sta stage three is going to be intercritical or interval gout. Before I show you like my little paper, I want to definitely let you guys know of one thing as well. Just because you're in stage one or stage two doesn't mean that you're going to jump up to stage three or four in a matter of months or years. Everybody's timeline is different. Everybody's body is different. But I do want to emphasize something real quick. Once you're in stage four, it's extremely hard to get out of stage four. I haven't even read any studies or research where people have gone out of to you know chronic tophaceous gout and gone back into stage three. So enough of me scaring you guys. So um, this is the information for critical or interval gout. So your uric acid levels are going to be anywhere between three to nine um, milligram per deciliter. That is going to be on a continual basis. You're probably going to always have between three and seven, and it can go up to nine, ten, or even higher during a gout attack. Your blood pressure is always going to be high whenever you have a gout attack. So just be aware of that. Hypertension is a huge thing when it comes to gout and hyperuricemia. So just keep that in mind. The number of attacks per year or month, it's going to be more severe than stage two. So in this stage, you're probably going to have one every other month or one every month. Um, they're going to become longer and more severe. You're not only just going to see uh, the gout attacks in like your ankles or your feet or your hands, you're probably going to see them in your shoulder, your elbow, um, your knees. So just be aware that it can happen anywhere now. Um, the medications, you're going to still be on allopurinol or euloric. If you're on allopurinol, um, allopurinol, you're probably going to be still, I mean, you could still be at 100, but you definitely probably will jump up to 200 or 300 milligrams for allopurinol. The one thing that you want to keep in mind with allopurinol is that you want to definitely take your blood blood work, whether that be monthly blood work or once every like three to six months. So that way you can go up and down with your dosage. Don't ever stay at the same allopurinol for over a year unless that is backed up by the doctor and by blood work. Um, you're also going to so that's going to be like your baseline. When it comes to your um, anti-inflammatory, you're still going to stick to endomethacin. If not, you know, definitely take the colchicine. If you can't take colchicine, then take naproxen, steroids, yada, yada. But endomethacin is the same thing. You know, you can, you can mix that with um, Tylenol because it's an NSAID and Tylenol is not an NSAID. So it basically does like a double effect without ruining your body. Um, in this case, I want to share something real quick. When it comes to medications and when it comes to your gout attacks, basically my rule of thumb is if you can't get rid of your gout attack within two to three weeks, you should you should go into either your rheumatologist or urgent care so that way you can go ahead and get a steroid shot. And usually with the steroid shot, the doctor is either going to um, join that with, you know, colchicine or they're going to give you a steroid taper regimen where it's like a little pack it'll come like a little pack like this um and it'll be like six pills six pills one day five pills the next day four pills the next day it tapers off but that's my biggest tip for medications diet and exercise you're probably going to do moderate exercise but rest largely after every single activity that you do note that every single time you do an activity it could trigger a gout attack you know your body, you know what exactly it can handle, so be advised of that. The diet, I would still strongly, you know, do the DASH or the Mediterranean or a mix of that or even the vegan diet. Um, other than that, you definitely want to stay away from alcohol still. You want to stay away from the fried foods, all that kind of good stuff. When it comes to interval or in, uh, intercritical gout, 
you're going to notice that gout attacks can be triggered not only just by food and also by um, physical activity, but it can also be uh, triggered by weather. Uh, so if it's 90 degrees one day, but then it drops down to like 60 the next day and overcast, your body might be achy. There's a lot of studies about, you know, uh, weather changes and gout. So just be aware of that. Um, it's not your fault. It's just the weather. Um, but other than that, I put down as like a little um, extra curricular. Um, you're going to have more limbs and joints, tendons for attacks. Um, so just be aware of that. So you might have an attack now in like your... Uh, your knees and your um, up, upper neck, that kind of thing. Um, so, and also the risk of kidney stones is very high. We're almost at the end point. So I already said the name of the last stage and it is chronic tophaceous gout. Chronic tophaceous gout, I just want to share one thing with you guys. It's, I've been living with this for the last 20 years and it's not to scare you guys at all at all and like i said going from one to stage four is different for everybody and just because you're in stage two doesn't mean that you have to get out of stage two you could stay in stage two for the rest of your life um but once you're in stage four it is very hard to get out of um so i just want to preface this a lot of things i'm going to talk about i'm going to assume that you know um and if you don't know there's a video about tofi that um, is in, if you go to my videos, you can look it up. It says, what is TOFI? Um, there's a video about Chris Stecca. Like I said, when I bring up this information for stage four, don't be freaked out. Okay. <laughs> this is your warning. All right. So stage four is chronic tophaceous gout. Your uric acid levels are mostly going to be above six milligrams per deciliter. Um, there are plenty of websites and studies that provide proof that when you're in stage four, you're going to be living between five and six MGDL for the proximity of being in stage four, which, you know, it's very hard to go from stage four to stage three or two. Um, the number of attacks per year or month, you have to come to the realization that you might be seeing a gout attack once or twice a month or every other month. Gout attacks are going to be probably a part of your life. Um, if you take Cristeca and you have that life-changing, you know, IV infusion drug, you might see your gout attacks probably once every three months, once every four months, but they're still long and painful. And I still advise you after two to three weeks of a gout attack to definitely get that steroid shot. Medications. You're looking at allopurinol. Now, because of your severity of your gout, you're going to be looking at 200 to 300 uh, milligrams, most likely. Remember, you still want to go up and down your allopurinol. But don't be surprised that the doctor wants to give you a 400 milligram or 500 or 600. Um, so diet and exercise. So extremely low impact on your joints. So that means like walking, stationary biking, um, water sports like um, swimming, that kind of thing. Diet. You definitely want to stick to everything that I said before. Dash, Mediterranean, no alcohol, that kind of stuff. Cherries is probably, I never mentioned cherries, but cherries could be effective in stages two and three, but it's not really going to be effective in stage four. Stage Your gout attacks are going to be everywhere. This can be in your upper, upper neck, lower back. This can be in your chest. This can be in your hips. This can be any, any joint, any tendon. Um, Tofi can show up anywhere from your ears to your hands. You can kind of see a couple of things in my hands. Let me show you on this, this hands even better. Yeah. See all that. So this is a good example right here. Um, but, um, Tofi will be in every single part of your joints of your limbs. I had Tofi on top of my knee, Tofi on my wrist. I had surgery right there a long time ago to take out like a, um, a golf ball size of tofi. Um, I had tofi a couple inches above my right ankle. So my hands, if you look at my hand, it can't go flat. Same with my right hand. This right hand is even worse. Um, I, I became stage four by the time I was 18. I was developing tofi in my ears, but I didn't know that that was tofi and like stage four. 
I knew that it was toe fine in stage four by the time I hit 20 where I had that surgery. But um, I noticed with my hands, they were starting to deform by the time I hit like 24, 25, and I'm 37 now. At the crux of everything with gout, your liver and your kidneys can't break down purines well enough into uric acid and your body can't excrete uric acid well enough. So that means that there's something wrong fundamentally with your liver and kidneys. If there's not, great. But usually those two things are tied together. Other risk factors are cardiovascular diseases, strokes, um, hypertension, um, and also cancers. So you never know if somebody went from stage four down to three or two. But what I definitely want to emphasize is if you are in any one of these stages, you want to stay in stage two or three the longest that you can.